Hi, my name is Alex, and today I want to share with you a project that I've been working on for the Bob Long Insight NG, specifically the stock engine on it. And my PB Nation handle is Rasgrees2006. You may have seen some work I've done on some die markers back in the day. And I just want to let you know that I'm trying to do this in one go, only one take, so you might see some pauses, some ums, some ahs, but I'm going to try to get through this as smoothly as possible. So what this particular presentation is going to be going over is the define, measure, and analyze phases of a DMAIC project. If you're an engineer or have Lean Six Sigma training, you might know and have seen this before, or a general corporate environment, but it's just a way to problem solve and root cause in a scientific way. Uh, but as I get into this, I want to really emphasize that this is for this particular insight, this 1005001. Uh, there's no serial numbers as far as I know for newer Bob Long markers, but when we're talking about problems, I'm using outside literature and internet posts and kind of bringing that all in towards this marker. Your issues, your mileage may vary. The solutions and the root causes that I find for this marker may not apply to your insight. Your insight might be perfect. So on to the problem statement. Again, this, def this define is limited to the stock engine, uh, but the problem statement is since its release in 2013, the Bob Long Insight has been known to consume lubricant, lose velocity during play, and be maintenance intensive, which has re resulted in its abandonment for tournament paintball use. And you can kind of understand that this is also true by the development and the fixes that have come through for the platform, such as this reflex engine with the spring assist at the back and the onslaught marker in general and all of that culminating in what is arguably the same engine just plumbed a little bit differently with extra U-cups and perhaps less uh, recocking venting going on for the force engine. Uh, the sources for this particular slide I pull a lot from PB Nation. Um, Pull a lot from Bob Long's YouTube. Uh, he specifically said consuming lots of lubricant. I believe the words he used was drinks lubricant like a drunk. And also Reddit posts because Reddit seems to be a good source of information as well. So moving on to measure. Uh, the sources for measurement on this are legacy data from PB Nation, Reddit, uh, the Inside NG manual itself, YouTube. And I have a sci-fi board as well as two chronographs that I kind of tested against each other to make sure that it was reading accurately. And I have consulted Impt for now. I watched some of his videos, chatted him up on, on Reddit. Uh, I'll, some of the kind of genesis for this project on where I'm going to be going with it specifically comes from his ideas. So special credit, special thanks to Impt for now. So getting into measure, we wanted to, I wanted to characterize the performance of the marker as it pretty much sits across the dwell spectrum. And as I was starting to work with it, 9.5 dwell just, it wouldn't work. It was, it was lobbing paint onto my garage floor. It wouldn't make it to the trash can. 10.5 dwell was the razor edge minimum that I could feasibly make the gun work. And then going up to the stock 12 dwell is where I got a, an average of 258 FPS. And the gun was kind of working. It was working. Uh, but I had wondered from the get-go if I could possibly get a few more feet per second if I was to go higher on dwell. So I did that. I maxed out the board. Well, the board max is 16.5, but 16 is basically max. And what we got was nearly 270 feet per second and a statistically significant increase from 12 to 12 dwell to 16 dwell and this is going to come in later when we look at a fishbone but i look at this and i think from a reliability standpoint to make the marker run all the time you would want the dwell to be here not here and then uh, I have a sci-fi board for a G6R. I plugged that into this Insight. I ran it at 20 dwell. 
and I did see a not statistically significant increase at 273 FPS basically. Uh, so would need to do more testing to see if 20 dwell made a difference, but I felt like it did make a bit of a difference, especially on the first shot. So continuing with um, analyze, right? So I took the Synsight, drowned it in Dow 33, and then I shot it for a thousand shots. Uh, 750 of these were live shots playing indoor, and then another 300 or so were just dry firing, trying to get to that 1,000 shot mark. And what I found was uh, there was a degradation for 1,000 shots at 10 and a half to well. I lost about 12 FPS there, uh, but then I got it right back once I put it up to 11 dwell and then 12, 13, 14, and 15 with 13, 14, and 15 basically being equivalent to uh, the 12 dwell on this particular uh, original test. So this is 12 original test, this is 10 and a half original test, and then after I had moved the lubricant around by using it, the spread of the different dwell tests. So hard to make any definitive takeaways here, but we definitely saw it kind of degrade a little bit between um, no shots and a thousand shots. So a question that's going to come up is, does the Insight have enough dwell? And the, the Insight manual itself says, set it at 12. Do not deviate from 12. There's no benefit to going higher than 12. Uh, but, you know, when we look at other markers that I don't know if you folks can see the similarity here. This is the force engine. This is a, a die M2 engine. There's a lot of similarities between old school dies and an insight. Uh, some diameters are different, but the general principle, the tail going over a mandrel to open the valve that goes flows through venturi holes out through the barrel, very similar. Legacy die matrix guns were a dwell of 18 for stock, with the M2 being a stock of 15. And here we see the uh, the Field One Force is a dwell of 16, which is four points higher than the Insight, where the engine is very similar. And if anything, the Force gets more energy pushing itself forward because it's propelled the entire way. And just as a note, the Field One Force has an ABS override of four, so you could potentially, if you've been sitting around for a while, fire your force with 20 milliseconds of dwell compared to the Insight's 12. So after reviewing our data and reviewing our, our literature, that brings us to a fishbone tool Ishikawa diagram where we plot out our root causes and then try to use our data to, to eliminate them. And our first one here is an inaccurate chronograph. I uh, compared two chronographs on single shots against each other, statistically insignificant difference. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate my chronograph as being inaccurate. Uh, when it comes to cold temperatures making the O-rings harder and stiffer, that's what we call a, a constant, right? We can't reasonably make cold weather go away. Uh, we should be able to increase dwell or increase pressure or turn up bolt speed or many different ways to solve the cold temperature problem. And we can't just, well, I don't want to just stop playing paintball just because it's cold. So this is not something that we're going to retain as a root cause. It's something that we have to work around. Uh, when it comes to wrong lubricant, I'm currently using Dow 33 medium, which is kind of the Honda Civic of lubricants. It's what most of the industry is based off of. It's legacy, what everyone's used. And if it won't work with Dow 33 medium, then it's something that needs more work. So we're going to eliminate that as a root cause as well. Uh, for high O-ring durometer slash stick, uh, the, this particular engine uh, flicks pretty easily. And I've done my best to make O-rings be as appropriately fitting as possible. Uh, it's not quite a gravity flick, but it will come out very easily. So I'm going to 
eliminate that particular root cause. And for dead battery, I'm using a brand new lithium battery and the sci-fi board has a voltage readout thing and you can shoot a few shots and see how far it drops down. It's, um, it's a new battery, it's lithium, it's good to go. Uh, not enough slash not frequent enough lubricant used. Um, Dow 33 medium is a little bit thicker than some of the thinnest lubricants. And I feel like this is not really the cause, but there's so much literature out there that says that the, the engine is very lubricant intensive. So I'm not going to eliminate it, but it's not something that I'm going to challenge for now. I'm, I'm kind of tabling it, putting it in the parking lot. Um, kind of moving on to the 2x20 O-ring. It's got the 2x20 O-ring in the right spot. That's not the issue. Uh, that particular shutoff valve may never come out. It's in there so tight. Uh, incorrect bore size. I'm using a 684 ULS. Um, that's matching about as well as I can for paint that you can buy in December and January. So I'm going to eliminate that as a root cause. And uh, pressure set not correctly. Uh, I have taken the regulator from the Insight, mounted it to a G6R, and used a G6R pressure tester. And that is where we got that 185 indicated from. And that is within specification. That might be a few PSI off here or there because of the uh, mounting of the Schrader valve. But we're within the operating range for the pressure being set correctly on the Insight. So I'm going to eliminate that as a root cause as well. And colloquially, we're not talking about shooting 270 instead of 280. We're talking about puffing or uh, lobbing paint into the dirt that doesn't make it halfway down the field. Uh, so manual states not to exceed 12 dwell. Well, based upon our earlier testing that showed 10.5 dwell being razor's edge of not even working and 12 dwell being not quite up to 16 dwell speed, I think that is a retained root cause that we need to investigate further and possibly implement corrective actions for. And reviewing the literature for the force and with it having ABS and going up to uh, 20 dwell stock to, to combat um, first shot drop off, I think 16.5 dwell max on the board for an, a Bob Long Insight is not high enough. Uh, Cold weather, um, lubricant breakdown, we should be able to turn that higher to try to push through some of the issues that the gun may or may not be having. And 12.0 uh, dwell too low, I think is kind of just the inverse of the manual stating not to exceed 12 dwell. Uh, the data so thus far shows that um, for reliable operation, you may want to turn it up to higher, up to 16 to get... Uh, more FPS and just to combat lube degradation if lube degradation becomes more of a thing at 2,000 or 3,000 shots. Uh, we only uh, challenged 1,000 shots as a limitation of the time for this for this uh, project. Uh, so the six one millimeter vent holes reduce forward energy too much. This especially comes from uh, Impt for now uh, talking with him. And I can definitely recognize that, you know, after the first three sixteenths of an inch for the, the forward stroke, um, it is definitely venting. That is the venting you feel in your face. And uh, it is not a very strong energy pulse pu pushing forward. And this is something that, we will be doing more testing going forward. So I have read some of the things that uh, Blast Legacy has been coming out with their bolt loosening, their, their hindsight engine. They called that out in their uh, product uh, launch quite a bit. And I'm not saying it's not a root cause for other insights. All I'm saying is I have no evidence of that being an issue on Insight SKU 105001, not this Insight. And the same for bolt engine misalignment. So we've gone over some data. We've looked at some Ishikawa diagrams. We may have a good idea or may not have a good idea of some corrective actions and some root causes and some further mods to do. But that is the 
end of this particular video. I want to thank you very much for your time and hope that you join us for this, the next video where we'll be doing some um, drilling down into the uh, problems and, and root causes. That's a hint there. Uh -huh. And uh, special thanks to uh, this, this Brazzy.u uh, person. Uh, he posted this CAD drawing like a decade ago, and I've never talked to him, but I've just been using this CAD drawing a lot. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, that's the end of the presentation, and thanks.